Bula Vinaka and good morning everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Fiji Trade Commission, uh, I hope you and your loved ones are doing well and are staying safe during these challenging times. Uh, for those of you who might not know me, I'm Camila Eiras. I'm Business and Communications Advisor at the Fiji Trade Commission to New Zealand. And as you might know, uh, our office, one of our office main objectives uh, is to source trade opportunities for Fijian businesses and help facilitate exports into the New Zealand market. So as part of our efforts to achieve this goal, uh, we have organized this exporting to New Zealand webinar, uh, where we will be looking at how to export to New Zealand with a particular focus on the regulations, the rules and the systems you will need to navigate in order to export your products from Fiji into New Zealand. So during the next hour, we will hear from three speakers, starting with Carleen Bentley from uh, Investment Fiji. She's the New Zealand market manager, and she will touch on the government support available to you as producers and exporters. We will also hear from the relevant regulatory agencies, including presentations from Nilesh Chan from Biosecurity Authority of Fiji and Nadanieli Wanga from New Zealand Ministry of Primary Industries, also known as MPI. Uh, these two will cover uh, the processes, the procedures and requirements for exporting from Fiji and importing into New Zealand. As you are aware, um, at the end of the presentation, we will have some time for questions. So I encourage you to submit uh, any of these questions uh, by clicking on the Q&A icon at the bottom of your panel. Alternatively, you can um, uh, write them on the chat and I will try to cover uh, as many as we can at the end of the presentations. So thanks again, everyone, for joining the Exporting to New Zealand webinar. Uh, I would like to welcome our first speaker, as I said, Carleen Bentley. She's the New Zealand market manager at Investment Fiji. Carleen holds a Master's of Commerce in Economics from the University of Auckland and has been working at Investment Fiji for the past two years. Previous to that, we were lucky to have her in our New Zealand team. So Carleen, I will pass it to you now so you can share your presentation. And yeah, I hope we, we can learn more about the opportunities in New Zealand. Uh, thank you, Camilla. <clears throat> so I'll just try and share my screen now. One moment. Um, can you all see my slides? Okay, thank you so much for your introduction. And uh, as she mentioned, I am Carleen Bensley and I work at Investment Fiji. Um, I won't take too much of your time. It's going to, it's going to be less than five minutes, don't worry. Uh, so basically, um, what does Investment Fiji do? Investment Fiji basically helps promote and uh, facilitate, uh, promote and facilitate investment into Fiji, whether it be from foreign investors or domestic investors as well, and also promote and facilitate exports out of Fiji. So that's through, um, you know, assisting local exporters, uh, increase their capability and also find export markets for them. So in terms of export, Export promotion, sorry. Um, Investment Fiji works with uh, both new and established exporters to upskill and promote their products and services overseas. So a few things that we uh, have done and are currently working on are, firstly, we have developed an online Fiji exporter guide. So that will help um, new, new exporters who want to learn how to actually you know, start exporting their products. Um, we've also hosted a few virtual uh, trade expos that comes under our Fiji Global Trade Expo series. The one for New Zealand was held in February and the one that we're holding for the US market will be, um, will be later this month. Uh, thirdly, uh, we also hold trade development programs. So similar to this, they are webinars to assist local exporters become export ready or learn um, requirements from different markets, for example. USA market last week. If you're interested in knowing about our upcoming events, please do uh, follow us, follow our Facebook page, Investment Fiji, and you'll get notifications about all our events that are, are coming up. Um, the Investment Fiji and the Fiji Trade Commissions worldwide will work very closely together. So if you come to us and we assist you with um, exporting, more, most likely we'll also be working with the Fiji Trade Commission. 
Uh, at Investment PG, we've got market managers for a range of markets, Australia, New Zealand, the United States, China, Japan, India, Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. And I am the market manager for New Zealand, and that is my email address. If you'd like to email me for any of your uh, questions you may have. So just touching very briefly on the current trade trends, um, according to the World Trade Organization, um, world merchandise trade is expected to increase by 8% this year, and it fell 5.3% last year. It is expected to grow by 4% in next year. And particularly for Fiji, according to the Bureau of Statistics, exports last year were 1.14 billion, and that was a decrease of 34.2 30 million uh, from 2019, the year prior. In terms of what we export, um, as I mentioned last year, our exports were 1.14 billion, and the top agricultural exports for Fiji were kava, taro, turmeric, coconut oil, and a mixture of vegetables. So that'll be both frozen and uh, fresh. Um, the top agricultural increases for last year were in kava, turmeric, coconut oil, ginger, and taro. But when looking specifically at the New Zealand market, last year our exports were $80.09 million. And the major agricultural exports that went to New Zealand last year were taro, kava, other vegetables, so that's a mixture of vegetables, eggplants, and cassava. That's it from my end. Thank you so much. Great, Carlin. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. And uh, moving on, our next presenter is uh, Nilesh Chan. He is the Chief Plant Protection Officer at the Biosecurity Authority of Fiji. Uh, Nilesh holds a double master's in plant sciences from University of Adelaide and Macquarie University in Australia. He has over 25 years of experience working on plant and production inspection, sampling, verification, and certifications, among other many areas. So welcome, Nilesh, and we look forward to your presentation. Hello, good morning, Angula from Fiji. I hope you can hear me now and see the screen clearly. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, Investment Fiji and Fiji Trade Commission for inviting Biosecurity Authority of Fiji to this webinar, which is focusing on getting to New Zealand from Fiji. And uh, I represent Biosecurity Authority of Fiji uh, this morning. Uh, and uh, as uh, in, in the introduction, my name is Nilesh, and I'm the Chief uh, Plant Protection Officer for Biosecurity. Uh, uh, we'll start off with uh, Beth's uh, mission and vision. Um, mission and vision is to protect Fiji's unique biodiversity in the and First, work together in Fiji to protect our country, people, um, and a unique way of life for the benefit of our families, leaders, and future generations. And also, in regards to the vision state, most respected and most effective and efficient biosecurity authority in the uh, region. All know biosecurity is uh, governed by um, many legislation. The legislation is the Best Secure Act of 2008, which has uh, at least 13 distinct chapters. And uh, on the screen, if you focus on uh, chapter 6, which specifically states about biosecurity export procedures, uh, the inspections, treatments, and certification in regards to all the activities from Fiji. All of importance on this slide is the very last point about food export market. I sense the of uh, agricultural produce and products from feed 
to the overseas destinations. So food supermarket in combination with biosecurity Act 2008 are the two legislations that uh, allows that in a legislative manner. Going further ahead, um, there's a role and its importance to feed this economy. And as we all understand... Can you hear me, Nilesh? You're cutting out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, should we try... Um, I don't know if you stop the video, if you can still share the screen. Maybe we can try that because you're cutting out a little bit and, and maybe some people are missing on some of the words you're saying. Let's see. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can hear you. Okay, um, continuing on from here. Um, we protected from many uh, foreign pests and diseases uh, affecting our person. And Fiji has a very green uh, and environment, so I'd like to have it that way. And also, uh, we, um, in, in, in my duty, try to facilitate safe trade uh, of important animals and plant products in the related uh, materials. So, in regards to facilitating of market access of plant and animal products to viable export markets, including one of them, New York, our very nearest neighbor. And we conduct this through a lot of inspections to comply with the biosecurity requirements of the receiving countries. So um, focusing on exports and inspection and notification, first and foremost, in regards in New Zealand, um, we look for uh, to have import permits from New Zealand to uh, uh, give um, the exporters from Fiji the permission to export products from uh, Fiji to New Zealand under the import permit uh, conditions and to have uh, uh, compliant uh, procedures being performed in Fiji. So in accordance with the import permit, the inspection of produce at biosecurity approved premises will, will occur. And uh, uh, this will include uh, the agreed method of sampling uh, and mitigation for pathogens, as well as packaging and labeling. And then uh, the next requirement would be the National Plant Protection Organization's documentation. So one of the primary documents in regards to fresh uh, produce is phytosanitary certification. And uh, Fiji has a uh, agreement with New Zealand to exchange our phytosanitary certification in the electronic manner. So during this pandemic, this is a very uh, helpful uh, innovation and it allows uh, for Fijian uh, to be received by our uh, counterparts in New Zealand MPI within eight to 10 minutes uh, uh, upon transmission. Uh, together with the documentation, if there is any treatments that is required for the products, uh, in, uh, for example, fumigation or free, uh, freezing treatment, that is also stated as part of the documentation process, together with uh, any declaration on freedom and, uh, and, and the status of various pests that is of concern to New Zealand. Also, uh, as part of the inspection and certification program, there is post-certification security till the exporters' uh, products uh, take a international departure. So biosecurity is involved in, in trying to see that uh, apart from the product meeting all the requirements, the, the other uh, uh, requirements associated with the product is also catered into and looked after. And then comes in the logistics for exports as well. In regards to uh, e phyto certification, um, what is e phyto certificate? It is the electronic version of a paper phytosanitary certificate as uh, uh, required by. International Plant Protection Organization and the Food and Agriculture Organization. And one of the major advantages of uh, using the e facto certification, which is the latest uh, innovation in, in that field, is that it is quite fast. So fast in terms of uh, transmission and uh, also fast in terms of templates to, to have uh, uh, these uh, certificates prepared uh, in a uh, quick and a error-free manner. Uh, these certificates are also uh, less uh, uh, prone to less fraud and mistakes, so they are also easier to re replace by uh, by security Fiji. Together with that, since the certificates are directly submitted from 
um, by security Fiji to New Zealand MPI, they are seen to be a cheaper method of transmission. Uh, in regards to eFITO, there has been uh, in intensive in-house training, uh, and that is also ongoing for staff and uh, stakeholders. So uh, our Fijian exporters will be able to partake, and, and the idea is for them to um, input the data so that they will be able to, um, gen uh, to, to initiate phytosanitary certificate from the ends, while BEF will be uh, guiding them and, and uh, doing its uh, activities in regards to inspection and uh, approving the certificates for um, a New Zealand transmission. Uh, and currently Fiji is exchanging very actively with New Zealand and, and uh, not only for exports, but imports of plant products as well. Fiji is uh, using this uh, electronic certificate. And uh, likewise with Australia, um, but uh, currently it's under the export uh, system from Fiji uh, only while we are working on getting import electronic uh, certification from them. And we are also trialing uh, this system with US and many other countries. Um, in regards to biosecurity approved premises and export licensing, um, BAP uh, in short is a, a custom built facility uh, that the exporters have, which permit the export of produce to be uh, properly and securely processed for the specific export market according to the requirements. So this facility will have all the you know, necessary uh, equipment and, and necessary procedures in order to see that uh, uh, if New Zealand uh, MPI requires certain ways of doing things, this BAP would be able to cater for that. And this facility is also associated with the staff. So they are quality controllers who are well versed with the export protocols of the importing country like New Zealand, and they are able to uh, guide their workers uh, as to the way the uh, products have to be paid. Uh, BEF also has an information sheet of basic guidelines in preparing the, in their export facility, and uh, these are all available on BEF's website. Uh, this be granted after the DAP for a and the renewals of these uh, certifications are on an annual basis. To exports and treatment of one of the uh, major treatments that happens for New Zealand market is the uh, fruit fly. Uh, and because New Zealand is of economic species of fruit flies is that uh, the, the fruit, the fruits, uh, papayas, eggplant, mangoes, and breadfruit are the post air uh, treatment, which is located very close to the airport. And the treatment is 47.2 degrees uh, for 10 minutes of early, so that the any stages of fruit flies within the uh, product, even after. Uh, these uh, vigorous checks and, and uh, certification, those are going to be mediated um, scientific uh, method. So with that, um, uh, Fiji enjoys non uh, uh fruit flies with uh, regards to chilies and products to England, so that is uh, at the treatment of minus 18 degrees for seven consecutive days to the export happening. Uh, if they are fumigation on import permits from New Zealand and that was observed, uh, if, if there are any time uh, in regards to CISPRO, in particular way in uh, where the products of PG are uh, produced and processed, so there is initial procedures in play in order to see that uh, those are uh, in, in, in place in a compliant manner. And for the information, uh, our and uh, for export in New Zealand market. And, and um, one of the good things is that uh, Fiji has been exporting a lot of uh, um, uh, products to New Zealand uh, and, and probably is one of the highest uh, um, uh, in, in terms of uh, volume. 
However, there is an opportunity to expand the market because uh, out of these 51 products, at least only 20 odd uh, products are regularly exported, while there is a good chance that uh, the other 30 products which are already on the approved market can be uh, looked upon by our exporters and would-be exporters. And, and uh, um, the information of these 51 products is available on the New Zealand MPI website, uh, which can be accessed by all. Uh, finally, mm, we'd encourage uh, all our stakeholders and, and the, uh, uh, the small use uh, the email address as stated on the screen to, to send us any inquiries and to uh, seek any information. Uh, there is that uh, BEF website uh, that is uh, also revamped uh, lately, so the, it has a lot of latest information in, in that regards, and uh, we encourage uh, all our exporters and would-be exporters to uh, do contact BEF in regards to any inquiries or any um, further information so that we could guide you in the right direction and we could have a very compliant and, and a very successful uh, export uh, market that we have historically been enjoying with New Zealand and, and in future to come, we'd like to make it uh, more robust and, and strengthen all this relationship. So uh, finally, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers and thank uh, all the participants and uh, in a level, if there are any questions, uh, I'd be glad to uh, take them on uh, and all the best. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Nilesh. Um, to everyone in the audience, we understand that the connection was um, not 100% effective. So um, please submit your questions uh, and we will share the slides at the end of the, of the session. Um, so yeah, thank you for your patience. And as I said, um, if you have questions for Nilesh, submit it on the Q&A um, tab and we will try to cover those ones at the end of the, of the session. So last but not least, uh, I would like to uh, welcome Nadaniri Wanga. Uh, his role uh, at MPI is Specialist Advisor Pacific Imports. Um, he, Nada is originally from Fiji and he has pre previously worked at uh, BAF for over a decade. So he's well informed and very passionate about enhancing Fiji's biosecurity systems uh, to support supply chains effectively. Uh, Nada, I pass it to you now, and hopefully we can hear you uh, clearly. Uh, Camilla, thank you very much for the, uh, uh, the introduction, and uh, thank you also for the opportunity to participate in this uh, webinar today. And uh, also, uh, uh, through you, welcome the, uh, uh, the the participants who who are attending today's uh, session. And we acknowledge. I also acknowledge my, our colleagues at the Biosecurity Authority of Fiji, uh, Neil Chand, as well as the uh, members of the BF team. And we thank them for the uh, presentation this morning. And I also would like to also give respect to uh, those in Fiji who have paved the way. Uh, to help uh, improve uh, Fiji uh, exports as well as systems uh, and uh, who have also um, um, uh, uh, provided uh, the, the support that has enabled uh, New Zealand uh, uh, Fiji to be able to trade with uh, with MBI to, to date. And uh, the presentation uh, I'll be sharing uh, with us this morning is from the, um, this is from the New Zealand end. What we've heard from Nils, uh, from Niles is the, uh, the Fiji end in terms of trade. Um, so I will be presenting to you the, uh, the, the New Zealand end and uh, feel free to uh, drop uh, your questions um uh, this morning as uh, i run through the presentations and then we can uh, come back to you to, uh, to 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 provide our responses uh, on those um, uh, questions so uh, hopefully you can see my screen uh, now uh, camilla can you confirm that yes yes we can Okay, thank you. So I have been requested. Uh, MPI has been uh, had been requested to, uh, to 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 present on the uh, the importation end uh, and what uh, information the uh, uh, participants uh, should know with regards to uh, uh, the, the importation uh, into New Zealand. And I'll be specifically uh, talking on fresh produce. 
And that will also include uh, floriculture or cut flowers and also other, other opportunities that will be, uh, uh, that is available for, for Fiji. So in terms of the outline of my presentation, I'll be covering the ex existing trade pathways that are available uh, for Fiji. And I will also be covering on the processes on market accessing. How do, how do you access uh, a market here in New Zealand? Uh, so that uh, will I'll be covering uh, both for new uh, access as well as those uh, that are existing. And thirdly, I will also be covering on the uh, some of the established facts for Fiji produce in uh, New Zealand. Uh, with that being said, uh, our role in MPI is purely to to open the doors or to uh, to, to issue uh, an approval on a um, on a product that has been requested by a country. Uh, so I, I just wanted to say that right at the outset so that we know that this is uh, the role of uh, the Ministry for Primary Industries in New Zealand MPI. Most of the times we have been uh, misunderstood that we provide uh, more than just that role, uh, that we also know uh, information about the market, uh, the, the demands and uh, the environment uh, at the market in terms of the, uh, the relevant commodities. That is not our role, that's purely a marketing and a trade role. Our role in MPI is purely to, to, to respond to a access request and to issue the approval uh, with regards to the request that's sent by the countries. And uh, fourthly, I will also be covering on some of the opportunities that are specific to, to Fiji, uh, that the participants uh, should also know. And lastly, I also would like with, uh, to also present on uh, some of the challenges that are there uh, to Fiji, uh, that should also be known and uh, that should also be, uh, uh, be worked, worked uh, upon so that uh, export uh, can uh, be enhanced and uh, uh, you know the exporters as well as the uh, uh, the growers uh, back in Fiji can uh, can get to really see the the, the impact of trade into the uh, sustenance as well as the improvement of their livelihood so going through the presentation uh, the first slide uh, this is on market access, market accessing if you are a um, if you are new and you would like to uh, uh, to start exporting to to New Zealand, uh, in terms of uh, as again as I've uh, alluded to, uh, purely on fresh produce, agricultural produce, uh, which includes cut flowers as well, uh, the process, the formal process uh, the, that exists uh, therein. Uh, firstly, the the exporting country, the exporting country. In this case, it will be the the, uh, the regulatory authority for the uh, exporting country. In this case, it will be the uh, Biosecurity Authority of Fiji that will have to submit a request to to New Zealand MPI. Okay, that's the that's the the formal process. So, if you are a grower uh, or you operate under a uh, a grower uh, like a cluster group or a village group. Uh, what you will need to do then is to liaise with the ministry and liaise with the biosecurity authority uh, in Fiji in order for you to go through the process uh, for then uh, for, for, for BEF to then um, uh, submit your, your access uh, request uh, through. There needs to be a change in this uh, space because in the past you will see uh, and unless I, I came into the uh, the last uh, few slides uh, presented by Niles, where he did mention that there is uh, 51 approved commodities from, from Fiji. Uh, interesting also to note is that uh, out of not all the 51 uh, uh, IHSs that are currently approved are also traded. Uh, there is a, um, th there are few IHSs that are not being utilized. Uh, so, so that has always been a concern from MPI because we've invested, um, we've invested our time, uh, resources, uh, as well as funding to be able to, to deliver or to uh, deliver an IHS or an approval for a commodity. And then in the end, uh, commodities uh, given the approval are not traded. So that has always been a concern from our end. And we are currently working with uh, uh, Fiji and other countries as well, so that we can 
uh, improve the system. Uh, so whatever has been submitted through, uh, eventually these are commodities that are prioritized so that we go through the process of issuing the approval. And once the uh, approval has been issued, uh, you know, uh, we would like to see that uh, those uh, approvals are utilized and trade uh, can result uh, in the engagement uh, between Fiji and New Zealand. So we receive the, uh, the, the request, the access request, and then we go through a prioritization process here in MPI. We have, we have a documented uh, processes and criteria that we uh, use to assess all those uh, requests from the countries. There is a generic, there is a generic uh, uh, criteria that's used by MPI. Uh, the the, the uh, prioritization is not done in isolation. Uh, we carry out the prioritization with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, because there are other uh, elements of trade as well as our bilateral relations that are also factored into the, uh, the prioritization uh, process. Unfortunately, the Pacific, we do not really fit in well into those uh, criteria. So what we've done in the past is we've developed uh, criteria that are specific uh, for the Pacific uh, so that we are still able to uh, uh, uphold our obligations in terms of our support to the Pacific as well as uh, allowing the facilitation of trade to, to continue. Once the prioritization is done, when we are uh, and we know what commodities or requests that we will be focusing on, then the process for the development of import health standards, we our approvals uh, are referred to and it's uh, legislated as import health standards. Some countries they use um, importation conditions, uh, some they use import requirements. So from, for in, in our context, for the purpose of our presentation, I'll be referring to either import health standards or IHS, and that is the approval that is issued for a commodity to enable that commodity to be exported and allowed entry into New Zealand. And once the IHS is developed, then um, uh, after that, the, the trade can uh, commence. So this is the formal, the formal process. A question, can also be asked, oh, how about an exporter? Can exporter uh, directly request to MPI? We, we work through the regulatory authority of the countries. In this case, it's BEF or Biosecurity Authority of Fiji because they are our equivalent in the exporting country and they, are the, they, they will be the authority that provides the verification and that will be our eyes on the ground and they, 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 they provide that regulatory uh, uh, authority uh, status to enable uh, the implementation of the processes that would be required in any in any given pathway. So those are the formal uh, pro formal processes. Now, if you look at number one, I've also bracket, uh, bracketed uh, prioritized and uh, market driven. Again, as I've mentioned, this has always been issue. Some of the requests that were sent to MPI in the past were requests based on just a grower who is related to someone in power who then requested MPI for us to issue an IHS for that for that commodity uh, and then once the uh, I, I say this with with respect and once the IHS is issued uh, the, the trade has not really uh, materialized as a result uh, of that engagement so that is why, as I've mentioned uh, earlier on, out of the 51, not all, on the, not all the 51 commodities are utilized. There are few that are still sitting there in the approved list and uh, those commodities have not been traded. Uh, so having a prioritized system where the growers, uh, exporters, and everyone that needs to be involved, um, and preferably through a supply chain approach, other, you know, all the, um, the parties are engaged, they are all involved, so that if a, once a commodity has been submitted through, there will be uh, a trade that could be uh, happening as a result of the, um, the approval given for that commodity. Next slide. Uh, in terms of the um, IHS or Import Health Standards uh, Development, for our information, it will be important for us to uh, note that there has been some improvements. 
this has been in the last how many years for every regional workshop that we always attend, even at uh, the local level, uh, the national workshops. There will, there's always been this complaint uh, by, by, by the countries that uh, the, the approval of an access request from the countries takes a very long time. Uh, of course, the, the processes uh, within uh, MPI is quite uh, rigorous. Uh, we have uh, a robust uh, process, but what we've done in the last two and a half years, we've uh, actually reviewed the process. In the past, we used to operate under a what is called a country commodity uh, system. That is now changed, where we've moved away from a country commodity to now a commodity uh, IHS or generic IHS. IHS. I'll use a few examples to, to provide uh, some context. In the past, if, if Fiji sub, uh, submits a market access request for, for, let's say, let's use an example, chilies uh, of this variety, the jungle variety, as they always be lovely to, uh, as we love to call them in Fiji. And on the same day, uh, Tonga submits an access request for the same variety of chili. But because we operate on, we used to operate on a country commodity basis, those two requests from two different countries, they will be assessed differently. So each access becomes a project on its own. Okay, so a, there will be a Fiji project on Chile and there will also be a, a Tonga project on Chile. You look at the technical information, the pests that are associated with those commodities, they could be similar, they could just be the same. But because of the system, because of how we operate and our country commodity uh, approach, we, those two requests are considered two different projects. So that is why that has always been the reason for the delays in the, in, in the past. And we cannot, you know, we receive, uh, we receive more than 250 plus uh, requests annually from all over. And uh, we, 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 we won't be able, we still are not able to deliver all those requests um, annually. So we try and uh, go through uh, a process that will try uh, to, to facilitate for the development of the IHS. So now, again, we've moved from a country commodity to a commodity or generic uh, system. So what's, what, what happens now is, with the two examples, Fiji chilies, Tonga chilies, if we receive the request from those two countries at the same time, now, under the commodity or generic system, we don't have to do two different projects. It'll be one project, it'll be a chili project because it's driven by commodity now, no longer country, but commodity. And then we then, it'll be one, just one project. And if the, the, the countries then, when it comes to approval, we list the countries in the IHS. So if both the countries get approved, then we list down Fiji, Tonga, and other countries who request later after that, we compare the pest, the, the pest associated with the, uh, with the chilies. If there is no uh, new pest, to the list submitted by Fiji and Tonga, then we, it's more, more an administrative uh, process in adding the new uh, country into the list, uh, rather than going through the whole assessment, which is quite lengthy. And we, we, we don't do, we don't have to do that now under the, the new system. Uh, I've, I've, I won't talk about two and three because that's purely uh, technical. Uh, and then number four, uh, there is a bilateral quarantine arrangement between Fiji and, um, and New Zealand. A bilateral quarantine arrangement or BQA in short is only, um, uh, is only uh, established uh, between the countries if there are fruit flies that's confirmed to be a pest of one of the commodities approved for, from the country. As once fruit flies is involved, a bilateral quarantine arrangement document will have to be um, established. If there is no fruit fly uh, associated with any of the commodities exported from a country, then a BQA document is not needed. 
In Fiji, yes, currently there is a BQA uh, document uh, because of uh, uh, the commodities that are considered host to fruit flies. And these commodities are treated uh, through the high temperature first year facility in Nandi. These are breadfruit, uh, eggplants, mangoes, and papaya. So the current BQA document uh, that's uh, dated uh, 1999. This is the BQA document that was signed uh, by uh, His Excellency uh, Ratu Tuidabulati, who was the uh, permanent secretary for the Ministry of Agriculture at that time. Then we, that's, the previous slide was for the, the, the new market access request. Now we're going to move to the existing uh, accessing of, uh, of the market. With the, with the existing uh, uh, trade, there are a few pathways uh, that exist that uh, are available to the countries, including Fiji. Number one, there is the fresh produce pathway. Uh, Niles has uh, presented that there are currently 51 uh, approved from Fiji. And there is also floriculture or cut flowers. Uh, Fiji also has uh, that pathway. There are four uh, approved uh, uh, species of cut flowers, and I will be providing you a list as well. And there is also a pathway for processed uh, products that also include semi-processed products. Processed, that would be like the powder, uh, some of the examples, um, uh, vacuumed, uh, uh, dehydrated uh, products, and they are also semi-processed. Semi-processed, a uh, good example would be uh, uh, peeled and vacuum-packed uh, pineapples, uh, semi-husked uh, coconuts, uh, these, are, these would be considered under semi-processed products. And then you also have the frozen pathway. Uh, frozen pathway is becoming uh, one of the uh, commonly sorted uh, a pathway now with a lot of uh, interest uh, being um, uh, interest to the countries, uh, especially for those countries that have not been exporting in the past all of a sudden. And uh, this is uh, as a result of COVID-19. Uh, we have uh, worked with most uh, of the countries in the Pacific now uh, in terms of uh, establishing uh, the frozen pathway and there's two countries that have actually started now exporting uh, through the frozen pathway. So we are uh, seeing that there will be a lot of interest and there will be a lot of uh, uh, trade that will be um, happening in the near future uh, through the frozen pathway. And we also have the handicrafts uh, pathway and uh, also containers. Uh, I've used containers because uh, this is another, it, it's a pathway uh, it's uh, also, when, uh, uh, from a trade perspective, this is also one of the challenging areas of trade because this is uh, one of the areas uh, where uh, pests are being uh, uh, detected uh, at the border when the consignments do uh, to, to get through to New Zealand. Talking about the existing trade, uh, furthermore, in terms of the opportunities with regards to those pathways that I've uh, uh, presented. Uh, under the fresh produce pathway, uh, it's not 50, it's supposed to be 51 as uh, presented uh, recently by, uh, by Niles. For Fiji, uh, there are currently 50 approved IJs. Uh, I've also talked about the improve of the updated system for IHS development. As I've mentioned, we've moved away from a country commodity to now a commodity or generic uh, uh, system. There is also the passengers pathway. Uh, passengers pathway where uh, opportunities are available to passengers. Unfortunately, now due to COVID-19, uh, traveling uh, has uh, stopped. Uh, but uh, there is that uh, opportunity for passengers to, to come to New Zealand and they bring uh, with them their um, uh, food, uh, whether it will be uh, fresh. Uh, so what we've done in the past, we have not developed a specific uh, IHS for, for passengers, but that will be uh, developed soon. So what we've done, we've just used the 50 approved IHS that I've uh, 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 the 51 approved IHSs that uh, I have uh, mentioned this morning 
as the pathway of the IHS that could also be uh, utilized by the passengers for when they bring uh, their food with them to, to New Zealand. Uh, frozen pathway, as I've uh, mentioned. Now, this is, uh, uh, this is one of the pathways that is becoming uh, uh, common now in terms of our discussions with the countries. Uh, with the fresh produce, we've only approved 51. With the frozen pathway, simply put, you can actually export anything to New Zealand. As long as you are able to meet the freezing requirements, you can export anything to, to New Zealand. Whether it be chilies, whether it be um, dalonitana, whether it be whatever is, that includes the 51 approved as well as those outside the approved uh, list. You have the frozen pathway that you can utilize uh, to, uh, to, to also export to, to New Zealand. Uh, processed products and semi processed uh, process have also uh, uh, touched on that. Uh, Briefly, handicrafts is a growing market. Uh, we've also gone through some uh, improvements as well in terms of how we facilitate the importation of uh, handicraft, especially the mats and the tapa. Mats and tapa for some of the Pacific Island countries when they are brought into New Zealand, because we don't have a, 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 a big uh, baggage hall at the airports, uh, the, the, you know, we know our mats and our tapa, they, they come in bales. And when we open them up for inspection at the border, they, they cover quite a significant space in the, uh, in the baggage hall. So we've, uh, we've introduced few requirements to, to, to help facilitate uh, and or not delay passengers and not delay cargoes uh, as a result of the inspection. Uh, done on mats uh, and, and, and tapa. And then we also have the cut flowers or the horticulture. Uh, as we speak, there are four species that are, you know, that are approved from Fiji. That's the ginger lily, the tail flower, the full, false bird of paradise, and the gigi, uh, ginger flower. Uh, the ladies will know, uh, these are the common names, the ladies will know uh, what they are. Uh, so, yes, these are the uh, species that are currently approved into, into New Zealand. Uh, in terms of the approved IHS, uh, I've just uh, provided uh, a, a more a... Um, uh, this slide just to, just to, uh, just to show uh, the, 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 the participants uh, where Fiji uh, stands in terms of the uh, approved commodities into New Zealand. Uh, as we speak, Fiji uh, has the highest, highest number of approved uh, uh, IHSs into New Zealand. This is right across the world and not only in the Pacific. We, Fiji, or even uh, your, your approved list is even more than Australia. It's even more than the US. Uh, so that's where Fiji stands uh, within the region. Uh, and as I've mentioned, you, your, 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 your list is the highest in terms of the approved list into, into New Zealand. Uh, very briefly, these are some of the commodities that are currently approved and I've just grouped them according to their uh, categories, uh, respective categories, as well as the pathway upon which they are approved into New Zealand. You have your root crops. Uh, you also have the HTFA treated pathway, uh, where four, breadfruit, papaya, mango, and eggplant, uh, approved under that pathway. Breadfruit, it's, uh, <clears throat> again, this is me talking outside the MPI uh, space. Uh, in terms of the market here, uh, we have uh, a lot of Pacific Islanders and, um, you know, we Pacific Islanders, we move and we move uh, with our food and we still maintain our connection with uh, people back at home as well as our food. Breadfruit currently is not being imported into New Zealand from any country. It's approved from Fiji, approved from Tonga, approved from Samoa as well. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, there's no breadfruit that's currently being, uh, being imported. Uh, papaya, papaya from Fiji, you have your Fiji red uh, that, that's currently being imported as well. Uh, and you also have the non-host. These are um, uh, non-host to fruit flies. 
Fruit flies are considered the most significant uh, pest of all horticultural produce. Uh, New Zealand, we don't have fruit flies. That is why we are we are very specific and we are very uh, uh, we don't mince our words when it comes to fruit flies because we don't have fruit flies. For a fruit fly to be detected at the border, the last operation that we had in terms of our emergency response to contain and try and eradicate a fruit fly that was detected at the border, it was two fruit flies. It cost us costed MPI uh, or the New Zealand government twelve million uh, just for our uh, emergency response to make sure that uh, the uh, the fruit flies that were detected in the traps at the border. Uh, do not get established or uh, yeah, they do not get established or introduced into New Zealand. So that happened. All our exports that uh, New Zealand uh, relies upon will be, um, will be that will be the end to our exports. So that we cannot uh, afford uh, to happen. And that is why we have a robust uh, biosecurity system to ensure all fruit flies and all pests of concern are kept out of, of New Zealand. Those non-host, pineapple, plantain, and chilies, those are, are, are commodities that are considered to be non-host at a particular stage of maturity. Uh, so they can be, uh, after all the research that has been conducted, those commodities, uh, they are import, uh, they exported to Fiji at the mature green stage, because that is the stage that research has confirmed uh, the, to be a stage uh, that is um, not a host to, to the fruit flies in Fiji. Uh, chilies, uh, hot rod, red fire and bird's eye, those are the, the commodities uh, or the varieties approved from Fiji. And again, I'm uh, saying chilies here, this is one of the top commodities from Fiji, I must say. I remember going to one of the uh, uh, supermarkets around Christmas, and I looked at the Fiji chili sitting on the on the shelf. At that time, it was selling at around fifty dollars a kilo. Uh, these are the these are, these are the chilies from Fiji. Fifty-eight dollars New Zealand a kilo. That's that's a lot of money. And we also have the the, the cut flowers, as I've uh, al al already um, uh, went through the list. And we also have the leafy vegetables. Uh, we belly bell is approved. Your dalo leaves, the dalnitana, and Fiji is the only country where uh, moda or charaya amaranthus is approved from. Um, we even have even approved papaya leaves, uh, uh, lemongrass or zomboi, as we uh, call them in uh, in Fiji. And then we also have a whole list of uh, of, of vegetables. Uh, that is also approved from from Fiji and kava. Yes, both uh, kava roots is approved as well as the uh, uh, kava powder. Uh, very briefly, that's the fifty-one uh, uh, approved commodities. Uh, back to the opportunities that uh, Fiji has in terms of trade and biosecurity. Uh, number one is the HTFA treatment facility or the high temperature first air treatment facility. Uh, this would be an opportunity for Fiji because the Fiji facility is the only facility that's currently approved or certified uh, and operational uh, at, this, um, at, at this given time. Uh, there are facilities in other uh, parts of the region, but uh, they are not operating, have not been certified by MPI as well. So there you have the opportunity uh, with regards to eggplants. You also have the uh, opportunity to export fresh breadfruit, uh, fresh mango, and as well as your uh, Fiji uh, red papaya. Uh, secondly, you also have a pathway that, uh, pathways that are specific to Fiji, uh, and uh, there are a few, and I, uh, uh, one of them is okra. Okra is only approved from Fiji. Okra is not approved from any other countries in the world, and here I'm referring to fresh, uh, fresh okra. And uh, duruka, duruka is also another commodity that's only approved from Fiji and not from any other country, fresh. And your Fiji red papaya, uh, it's come with a brand, it's come with, uh, with, uh, with a brand, 
Uh, so it's well known in the market. And uh, also, also have plantain. Plantain is also approved from uh, Fiji. Again, uh, the, it's approved from few other countries in the region, uh, but it's not uh, it, it's not consistent in terms of how that is um, exported to New Zealand. And chilies, I have mentioned chilies already uh, in terms of the opportunity, and also coconut. Uh, coconut is also opportunities uh, uh, with, with coconut. Semi-processed products, I've already covered that. A frozen pathway uh, as well. This is important because um, the market, uh, it's important to note that the market is always evolving. Uh, and you talk about the McDonald's uh, generation. Uh, that's, that's also, uh, um, you know, it's, it's all that generation, because of that, it's also uh, trickled to other uh, parts of the uh, food chain, where in a family where everyone is working and no, working in shifts, uh, when they come home, they don't have time to sit down and peel taro, peel cassava. So they just open the fridge, grab the packet of frozen taro into the pot, boil them, and then it's ready and they're back to, uh, to work. Passenger pathway, uh, I've also uh, um, uh, covered it uh, already. Uh, just last few slides, I thought I'll also throw this in the mix. Uh, some of the challenges to Fiji for your consideration. I guess the biggest question uh, that we need to ask, or you need to ask, do you really know the market for Fiji produce in New Zealand? Do you know them? Do you know the market? Uh, do you know the best time of export to New Zealand? When, Interestingly, when I came to one of the workshops in Fiji, when we were talking about workshop, uh, sorry, the exports, one of the growers uh, was asking about when to produce. That was when we, uh, uh, when we heard that their their perception was that they can grow anytime and they can export at any time to New Zealand. I think it's important that uh, let it be known that our opportunity here in New Zealand is when it's our winter. When it's winter in New Zealand, nobody goes out of the house to go and plant. Nobody plants during the, the, the winter. So that is the opportunity that the other countries in the world, Fiji included, uh, for you to make uh, use of that three months of winter to export to New Zealand. Do you know the size of the market? Do we also know and understand the behavior of the consumer? These are important information that needs to be affected as well in terms of exports. Do we, Fiji, do you know your competitors? Do you know the risks and the threats in the market? Uh, other countries are also uh, exporting to Taro to New Zealand. Uh, some of the countries have actually um, uh, done their own breeding where new varieties are now uh, being planted by the growers and they are uh, trying to uh, uh, send that to the market as we speak. Uh, um, the relationship between the buyers and our uh, exporters. Uh, the competitive edge for Fiji, do you know them and for which commodities? I make a reference to a commodity that is pineapples. You know, we say, oh, pineapples from Fiji and from the Pacific, they are the best compared to what we see in our supermarkets here in New Zealand. And we say we have that competitive edge in terms of uh, the taste, uh, the, the bricks level, uh, the aesthetic value, the, uh, uh, and other factors as well. But even though we have the competitive edge, we don't we don't control the market. Somebody else is controlling the market. Who we are only exporting in containers, air cans, which is LD3, LD5, LD8. Whereas the other countries who are also exporting pineapples, they export the pineapples in ship loads. So you see the difference between a LD8 and a ship load. They come in and they flood the market. Even though we have the competitive edge. But we don't control the market. The value addition properties, uh, sorry, opportunities. There are value addition opportunities that are out there. Whether the, they are known, have they been scoped? Do we know those opportunities? Uh, the other component is the market intelligence and the research. As I've mentioned, the market is always evolving. What com the commodity that is in demand for these three months 
may not be of high demand in another other times of the year. So these are all uh, the important factors about the market. Do are we accessible? Do we know uh, about what happens in the market and how the market shifts every now and then, uh, including the, uh, the the behavior of the consumers? Uh, so when we, I guess when we don't know that, then other countries, they have the opportunity to tap into that market. And I give you a good example, is the coconut. Coconut, I speak for the region, most of our coconuts are still landing in New Zealand with their husks. Asian countries, they used to, but they don't do that anymore. They came in, they studied the market, and they went back. So what they do is they send in half semi-process, which is a coconut that's half husk, and they are shrink wrapped. So the coconuts, when they land here, they go straight to the shelf, and the consumer just comes in, buy that coconut, all he needs is a knife to cut open the coconut, and he drinks the coconut. Whereas our coconut, when they land in New Zealand, they still need to be husked. That's, it's not an easy thing to do. So while we are still husking, the consignments from the Asian countries, they come and go with a quick turnaround uh, concept, uh, while we are still trying to husk our coconuts and land them at the shelves. The research for continued improvement. How can we ensure that we have a research mechanism that allows for us to know how we are competing, how we are performing in the market, and also provides us the opportunity to look within, look externally, in terms of trying to, to operate how we, we, we trade. Another issue is the farmer replacement. Uh, this is common right across the region with uh, super rugby with uh, our rugby players now becoming a commodity they're all traveling overseas and the seasonal workers program as well which is good they can go work and come back and support the countries but that has sort of thinned the the support that we have in the in the countries so that we continue to to, to ensure that agriculture uh, is um, you know is maintained and also continued uh, in in Fiji. I attended one of the workshops and I uh, was there in Fiji when there was a a, a a video sorry a TV program that was on during the week and I was listening to the TV program where the principal of Nabuso Agricultural School was being uh, interviewed and he was asked that question about uh, the, the, the farmer replacement and then and he said he, he actually asked the, um, uh, the the facilitator in the uh, TV program whether he knew uh, about the, the the youngest farmer in Fiji the, uh, the the facilitator did not know so the the response that I heard that day was the the youngest agri uh, grower in Fiji that was three years ago. Here we're talking about a grower who's well established, who's operating commercially, was around 55 years old. So that should be uh, a challenge then to, to us. How are we ensuring that we have uh, uh, our people uh, on the ground that's ready to be involved and are also involved in agriculture? And the uh, last on that slide is the consistency of supply. Consistency of supply, this has always been an issue for the last how many years up till today. Businesses, importers here, it is, it's, it's a business risk for them to, 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 to engage if they are not going to be given the assurance about consistency of supply. Consistency of supply. So again, that would be, uh, uh, something that needs to be considered as well. Uh, yes, lastly, uh, there's a shift as well from an MPA perspective, which will be a challenge. Uh, what I've spoken about is purely just biosecurity issues. But now food safety issues are becoming uh, of, of, of concern at this point. Still on that, we are going to be, the, the improvements, there's going to be some changes from our end. In the past, if you look at the list that I provided, uh, you look at uh, Choraya or Amaranthas or Moda or curry leaves. Currently, as we speak, they are sourced from the wild. So if I'm the exporter, okay, and my importer wants 
two tons of mother. I just go to the wild. I go all over the place to the bush, to everywhere, and harvest mother. That's not going to happen in the new, the improved system. So there has been some discussions about gap. We are mostly approaching that from a commercial production perspective. So it doesn't matter the number, okay? For example, oh, I have only two breadfruit trees at the back of my house. Can that be considered a commercial premise? Okay, if you compare that with other bigger countries, uh, no, uh, you know, uh, that cannot be um, uh, equivalent to that. So what we've done for the Pacific is the number is not important, but as long as we have a system, as you have a system that supports the commercial production and takes off the commercial production uh, criteria, then that's what we would uh, uh, would like to see, as opposed to what is happening now, where we are running out to the wild, where we are harvesting curry leaves from the wild. Those curry leaves, they have not been uh, managed in terms of pests. That's not going to happen uh, anymore. Uh, maybe that's the end of the slides, uh, Camilla. Sorry, uh, it's quite a mouthful. But uh, thank you again, Camilla. Thank you, uh, dear participants, for, for uh, yeah, listening through the presentation. And thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, my email is there, but I'm happy to take any questions if there are any. Thank you. Thank you, Nada, for that uh, thorough presentation. Um, being conscious about everyone's time, because it's uh, 10 past 12, um, we had a lot of questions. Um, Maybe what we can do uh, is, from our office, we commit to uh, copy and uh, uh, paste all the questions and the answers on a document and send that together with the slides um, to all the attendees. Um, we might be able to take a couple of, but uh, I don't want to take mu uh, much of your time. Uh, the other thing I was going to say, uh, because I, I saw that that was asked many, many times, uh, we can share the list of commodities approved by MPI. Uh, I know Nara uh, briefly touched on that as well, but uh, we are happy to share that list because there were a lot of questions requesting that list. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is that I saw uh, a couple of questions about, um, about subsidies, about uh, financial support. Uh, both Investment Fiji and the Fiji Trade Commission, we don't provide, a, 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 we provide non-financial support. But um, I wanted to, um, I mean, uh, share with you that uh, Business Link Pacific um, is uh, currently accepting um, uh, applications for their uh, second round of adaptation grants. So I think the deadline is on the 27th of uh, July. So I'm happy again to add that information to uh, the email and you can, potentially apply um, for some sort of support through that program. Um, okay, so as I said, I mean, we have heaps of questions, um, but uh, I guess that, uh, okay, so we have, I, I have, I'll have a couple of, I'll read a couple of these and then we can wrap it up. And as I said, I will send the questions and the answers uh, via email. Um, but, uh, Yes, uh, uh, we have one that is, what are the 10 high demand products which has less focus from the exporters currently? I think potentially, Nada, you could um, reply to that one. Uh, absolutely, thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Camilla, and thank you for the question uh, uh, as well. I think if we are to look at the um, the, the, the high uh, needs commodities, maybe I would say uh, <clears throat> plantain. Uh, plantain is uh, one. Pineapple is uh, another one. Uh, peanut is another one. And Daloni Tana, Daloni Tana, it's, uh, uh, it's another one, and Yams uh, as well. Good. Um, I have another one for you, if you don't mind, because I mean, I think this one is really, no. I have a couple uh, of questions uh, regarding Global Gap as well. And there's, um, you mentioned, some, I mean, uh, the Global Gap and 
some of uh, the attendees are wondering uh, if you can share a bit more um, uh, on how this will translate to production and farming systems in Fiji. Uh, you know, thank you, thank you, Camilla. Thank you for the question. Uh, GAP, uh, GAP, or GAP is uh, the acronym for Good Agricultural Practices. Um, <clears throat> there are few. There, there are few uh, different GAPs or different systems. We have the World GAP. We also have the you know, the European Union. They have their own uh, GAPs. Uh, there are few systems that are currently um, uh, in place uh, globally. Um, when we, when, when, when I did mention about the, um, the improvements in the um, in the way we are going to be uh, issuing the uh, IHSs in the IHSs in the future, we've actually considered the gap, but there is no there's no gap for like a Pacific gap. Uh, gap is not something that can just be developed uh, over a desktop um, uh, you know consultation because the system needs to be implemented as well. And it has to be go through a certification process uh, as well as an audit, as an audit component. So it's one thing to develop a gap system, but the support system to make sure that uh, the system is sustained and also upheld, uh, that, that's, that's, uh, that's another uh, challenge that comes with that. So, We've, we've acknowledged that uh, in the process of us uh, working through our improvements. So what we've done, we've not actually spelled out GIP, but we've, uh, from, from, from our end, what we've done was we've, we've simply, uh, I guess this is considering the Pacific, we wanted to, 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 to ensure that this does not stop trade, because if we are going to put our foot down and said, okay, every country you have to have, a system, okay, that's equivalent to a gap, or you have your own gap. So, one instead of doing that, what we've done was we've uh, we are just going to, uh, uh, to to require in our IHS for every commodity. This will be the basic requirement. The basic requirement will be for every commodity they will have to be commercially produced. Okay. As long as there is a system that manages the risks, okay, this can be country specific. So which means you don't have to follow a system in Europe that you will not be able to implement in Fiji. Whatever works for Fiji in terms of, first you have to identify the risks for that commodity and then you develop and put in place a management or a risk management, a plan that mitigates those risks. And again, as I mentioned in my presentation, it's not about the number, it's about uh, the system. Whether you have one breadfruit tree, as long as you are applying the commercial production criteria uh, or measures on the breadfruit tree, from my perspective, we're happy with that. So, Gap can be a scary word because it's quite a, a big system, robust system to develop and also to, to manage and maintain. So simplifying that to the Pacific, we've, I would say, dilute that down to a commercial production uh, concept, but not taking away the fundamental of the principles upon which um, Gap and all the other commercial production systems will need to be um, will need to operate under. So, commercial production would be, from my perspective, that's the, the way to go. As long as you know the risks and you have a mitigation plan or a risk management plan to mitigate and manage those risks, that's what be that is what will that will be of importance to the system in uh, in any of the, the countries. And you need to also holistically look at the commodity. You're not only looking at the biosecurity list, you will also have to look at the, um, the food safety concerns. Uh, this is where pest residues come in. So you cannot just be spraying uh, like it's no man's business. You will have to go through a schedule. So look at all the perspectives, uh, look at a commodity from all aspect, uh, perspectives, identify the different risks 
and then develop a holistic risk management uh, program that addresses those risks from our perspective, that should be good enough in terms of satisfying the New Zealand market. Thank you, Camilla. Thank you, Nada. And adding to, to your answer, I mean, we our office has been working a lot around Global Gap. So um, to anyone in the audience that has questions about this, uh, I encourage you to email me and, and we will be happy to assist to provide more information. And hopefully soon we will be able to reveal um, some of the work that we've been doing uh, to, to support farmers in Fiji to, to get Global Gap. Um, again, I mean, I'm just being conscious about everyone's time. I think we took um, a little bit more than an hour, uh, but, uh, but I didn't want to interrupt Nada because his presentation was um, uh, very helpful. So again, I will um, put together a document with all the questions and the answers that we receive on the panel because uh, Nilesh has done a, an amazing job uh, replying to many of those inquiries. Um, Thank you uh, to the speakers, uh, Nada, um, Nilesh, and Carleen. Uh, thank you for your time uh, and, and yeah, for all your, your helpful and insightful information. Um, to everyone who joined us today, thank you again. Um, we hope that this session uh, has clarified some of your questions. And as I said, uh, we encourage you to contact our team in New Zealand or even Carleen um, at Investment Fiji. I mean, we work closely together, so we are here to support you and we can assist you with your efforts export inquiries. Um, again, I will send all the information via email and this session will be uploaded to our uh, YouTube channel so you can always go back to the session and review uh, some of the of the contents that were shared. Uh, 